Death is one of the most simple and powerful tools in a writer's belt. Is this a dead man, Doctor? Very dead, Mr. Spock. Every human instinctually feels that existential dread crawling up our ever-failing mortal coils. You don't have to explain to the audience why they should fear death, or how death works, or that you should be sad when a likable character dies, which makes death a very easy and effective show-don't-tell writing style. When Hughes is running from lust in Full Metal Alchemist, you understand the stakes. And when he dies, one of the reasons it hits as hard as it does is because of how relatable this scene is. We can all empathize with losing a loved one, or at least the fear of it. These characters don't have to explain why they're sad, they just have to be sad. Our empathy and our life experience does the rest. Uh-oh, but there's another reason why this death is so effective. Because when a character dies, the viewer understands that they aren't coming back. No one expected to tune in to the next episode of Full Metal Alchemist and see Hughes walk back in and go, Phew! Man, you wouldn't believe the day I just had. Even though this is a fictional show, he is functionally dead to the viewer. He will never be a part of their life again. He's gone. And no one has to explain that. The narrator doesn't have to say, And that was the last time we ever saw Hughes. Just the act of him dying communicates all you need to know. So at this point in the video, you're like, yeah, I get it. I know what fucking death is. Excellent. Now that we've established how powerful death can be as a writing tool, let's talk about the problems with death as a writing tool. Problem one, not enough death. More. This one is the most common in media by far. Otherwise referred to as plot armor, it's the sense that there's no actual danger for key characters. In the show called Naruto, you're pretty damn sure that Naruto isn't going to die halfway through. And this goes for more than just the main character. Sasuke isn't going to die before his final confrontation with Naruto. You don't set this shit up for 200 episodes to have him die to fucking kill or be. <laughs> Look at this motherfucker. I am peeking at you. See, you're not quite through, but in all your crew, your brain cells are few. But once the audience picks up on the patterns of your storytelling, once they can see narrative arcs forming, once the hero has escaped by the skin of their teeth for the 20th time, the fear of death just isn't enough to build tension. Once you lose the audience's trust in your ability to kill a character, you have to start making up other things to hold their suspense. Suddenly it's not, oh no, my favorite character's going to die and I'm never going to get to see them again. It's, oh no, Naruto will lose his powers if he uses wind-style Rasengan an unspecified number of times. But having to explain to people why they should be concerned or excited is never going to hit as hard as instinctual reactions. Problem two. Too much death. Alright, so we've established that death is the best narrative device. Let's just use it all the time, is probably a direct quote from George R. R. Martin's autobiography. Death can easily be overdone in a few different ways. Killing sporadically, without thought, keeps characters from developing arcs, and keeps people from growing attached to them. You don't give a shit when Boo kills every non-main character on the planet, because you don't know who the fuck they are. Worse than that, though, is killing a character when they're halfway through an arc. If you killed Sasuke in the Killer B fight, it'd be like, oh shit. Then I'll sting you like a Killer B! Nah, he's okay though. But if Sasuke died there, all the narrative buildup would have been for nothing. It'd be incredibly underwhelming. Like, not killing him here is predictable. It's still the better option. Now, there aren't many examples of a character being killed halfway through an arc because most people know not to do it. The best one I can think of is Gohan in the Boo Saga. This show has been focusing on him for a while. He's trained for this fight for episodes. And then, uh-oh, whoops, guess Goku's the main character again. Most shows get around the arc problem by having a handful of side characters with nothing going on that just hang around waiting for their turn to die. So people can go, oh wow, this show sure is intense. I wonder who will die next. Well, I'll tell you, not these guys. Problem three. Death doesn't stick. 
The reason I wasn't sure about using Gohan being absorbed by Boo as an example for the last one is because Dragon Ball is the biggest offender of death not sticking that I've ever seen. See, a large part of death's weight comes from its permanence. When Hughes died, he was gone. In Dragon Ball Z, these are the only two characters that don't die. When death loses its permanence, it just becomes another plot point. There's no emotional weight behind it because it's just going to get sorted out at the end when the bad guy loses. There's no consequence here. We'll be able to wish back all of the innocent people Boo and Bobbity killed today. Every single one of them. Ooh, but you could argue that the good guys always being revived is just an example of plot armor. The good guys can't die, but the bad guys stay dead, right? Yeah, like when Frieza died, he doesn't come back. Oh, he's back. Well, that's just filler. He doesn't actually come back. He's back. Um, uh, but he, he dies again. So he won't come back again. He's back again. Okay. There's no weight to these deaths past the first one, because once you've broken the seal, the character can never truly die. That's why the stakes and power scaling in Dragon Ball have become so insane. Because when death doesn't matter, where the fuck do you go? Death is easy to use. Killing a character will always be a powerful tool. The longer your narrative goes, the harder it becomes to use that tool effectively. The more people become attached to your characters, the harder it becomes to kill them. But the less you kill them, the more disillusioned your audience gets with your plot lines. So what's the solution? Mine? Fuck death. Fearing death is my day to day. Give me some nice slice of life where there's no danger. You know, everybody's just happy. Was that a fantasy?